Hello, in this video we have to find the values of p for which this series converges. So to do this, we're going to use the alternating series test. So the alternating series test says that we first have to identify our a sub n. So a sub n is always the non-alternating part. So in this case, it's the part uh, without the negative 1 to the n, so 1 over n to the p. And there's two conditions that have to be satisfied for the alternating series test. The first condition is that when you take the limit, um, you should get zero. So let's investigate this limit very carefully. So this limit should be zero as long as the n stays downstairs, right? Like if n, if if p was negative one, then we would then we would get something like this, and the limit would be infinity, right? So that would be no good. So as long as p is positive, this n will stay downstairs, and this fraction will get smaller, and this will approach zero. This will be true if p is positive. Okay, if p is positive, the n will stay downstairs, and the limit will be zero. Two, we have to uh, check that it's non-increasing. So a sub n, which is 1 over n to the p, is non-increasing. I'll just say it, then I'll justify it for p greater than 0. Now I'm going to go ahead now and uh, show you why. So if you had to justify y, what you could do is you could redefine your sequence as a function of x, like this, 1 over x to the p. And then uh, investigate uh, when is this uh, decreasing. So to do that, what you can do is you can bring the x upstairs and write it like this and then take the derivative and try to see if it's negative. Remember, a negative derivative will mean that your original function is decreasing. So f prime of x is equal to, let's see, we'll put the negative p in the front, just using the power rule. Then we have x to the negative p minus 1. Okay, x to the negative p minus 1. So what happens here, this is equal to negative p over, and you could think of x to the negative p minus 1 as negative p plus 1, like this, right? This is the same as this. And so when you bring it down, it becomes x to the p plus 1. And x here is bigger than 1 because n starts at 1, so we can consider only values of x greater than or equal to 1. And so uh, as long as p is positive, this bottom piece here is positive, that there's no issues. And if p is positive, negative p is negative. So this will be less than zero, right? So f is decreasing. And non-increasing means uh, decreasing or staying the same, so everything is satisfied. So again, is it necessary that you do this? Um, I, I don't think so. I think it's pretty clear just by looking at it that it's going to be getting smaller and smaller and smaller as long as p is positive. So both conditions are satisfied, so it converges by the AST, alternating series test, if, if p is positive. So the answer here will be uh, 0 to infinity. This is the set of all values of p uh, for which the uh, series will converge. That's it.